Hey my fellow horror fans and welcome back to October Horror Fest. I revealed in yesterday's October Horror Fest review that today I will be reviewing Underworld Evolution and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Following the success of Underworld, Underworld Evolution was put into development and even though it would take 3 years for the sequel to come out, it was well worth the wait. Underworld Evolution received a huge budget of $45 million which was more than double the budget of the first Underworld. Underworld Evolution was released in theaters on January 20, 2006 and managed to make a solid $111,300,000 at the box office. Underworld Evolution starts with a flashback to a time when the vampire and lichen races were still young and we get to see Victor, Amelia, and Marcus, the three vampire elders in action as they try to destroy the first generation of werewolves that were out of control beasts. It's revealed Marcus has a brother named William who is the first lichen, and he is out of control of destroying village after village turning humans into lichens at an insane rate. Victor has his army attack and restrains William betraying an agreement he had with Marcus that they were not to harm William. And Victor warns him if he even speaks his name again that William will be killed right then and there. Marcus seeing no other choice stands down and shows Victor his loyalty and Victor tells him William will be locked away for all time, and he will never see him again. And Marcus clearly wants to kill Victor. I admit, I really liked this flashback opening, and it gives more backstory to the characters we saw in the first film, and introduces new characters that will play a major role in this film, and sets the stage for this film's plot. The film then takes us to the exact same night Underworld ended, Selene takes Michael to a safe house, then rushes back to the Vampire Coven to try and stop Craven from killing Marcus, the last Vampire Elder, but... Craven gets there first, but the little traitor gets the shock of his life when Marcus bursts out of the floor and kills Craven's men, and kills Craven after getting some information from him. I have to point out, I think Marcus is the only Vampire that has the ability to fly, but that might be because he's the first true Vampire, but either way, he looks freaking awesome and menacing. While Marcus is getting up to speed after a 200 year slumber, we are taken to a ship with a lot of high tech surveillance equipment and are introduced to a man who seems to know a lot about the vampires and lichens and he looks like an interesting character. The man examines Victor's body and finds hidden in his ribcage some kind of device that has a striking resemblance to a pendant that Victor had around his neck that Selene took from his body, but its exact purpose is unknown, but will be revealed later. Selene and Michael have a run in with Marcus, and after an unsuccessful attempt to try and bite Selene, they get into a huge battle with him, but they manage to fight him off, but then Selene has a close call with the sun. But Michael manages to get them to a dark place to wait till it's dark, but it was a close call. Alright, with nothing better to do, and the coziness of the situation, Selene and Michael give in to their feelings, and I don't think I need to go into detail about what happens next. That night, after the sun sets, Selene wakes up and after looking at the pendant, she has a flashback to when she was a kid, and she remembered holding it before, meaning the pendant has a major importance, but what? Selene wanting answers takes Michael, and they go to a vampire that she was ordered to exile called Andreas Tannis, who was basically the historian for the Vampire Coven and knew all the dirty little secrets and he was exiled for revealing damaging information so Selene knows he will have answers. They get there but encounter an unexpected problem, lichen bodyguards and hooker vampires. But after a pretty quick but solid battle they're taken care of. Selene makes Tannis talk and he reveals that Marcus is the first true vampire and he has the ability to access anyone's memories from their blood. Nice ability to have. Goes on to say that Marcus's brother William is the very first true werewolf and he became out of control and had to be stopped so he was locked away. Selene realizes Marcus is looking for his brother and Tannis tells Selene her father built William's prison and that's why her family was killed. A shocking revelation. Tannis sends Selene to someone who will have more answers, but after Marcus pays Tannis a visit and gets what he needs from him, he's right on their tail. I gotta hand it to him, he's very determined. Selene and Marcus meet with the mysterious old man from earlier, and Selene realizes he's actually Alexander Corvinus, the first true immortal. I had a feeling he was important, 
Corvinus comes clean about who he is and that he's been spending centuries hiding the war and destruction his two sons have caused. Talk about a long job. Selene, Michael, and Corvinus have a debate over morals when Marcus shows up and starts killing off Corvinus' men. And then he attacks Michael and before Selene can help, it looks like Marcus kills Michael, takes the pendant that is revealed to be one of the two keys needed to open William's cell. And Selene shows up and gets enraged and attacks Marcus but she's overpowered and he is able to get the information from her blood showing where William's prison is and Selene manages to shoot him and he drops her and goes to have a little chat with his dad. Selene tries to save Michael but he seems to be dead. Marcus kills the rest of Corvinus' men and confronts his father and after a heated philosophical debate he stabs his father multiple times and grabs the other part of the key to William's cell and leaves his father for dead. Yeah, Marcus is one cool vampire. Corvinus' remaining men show up and, and try to help him, but he refuses wanting to finally die himself. I guess he's finally tired of playing Guardian, but can't really blame him. He has his men bring Selene to him so she can bite him and become a hybrid immortal herself with much more powerful abilities. And she has his men take Michael's body and they leave to go after Marcus. And Corvinus sets off an explosive killing himself and destroying his ship. Marcus unfortunately gets to the prison first and releases William, and Selene and Corvinus' men show up and get into a battle with both Marcus and William, and it becomes quite an intense battle, and Selene manages to temporarily trap Marcus and goes to battle William, who manages to kill almost all of the rest of Corvinus' men, and Selene ends up in a pretty intense battle with William, but unfortunately the dead man William bit become lichens, and Selene is forced to fight them too, and just when it looks like she's cornered, Michael suddenly comes back to life, and makes a Hollywood style entrance and kills the Lycans and Selene and her backup open fire on William but before they can finish him Marcus manages to free himself and he literally plays tug of war with the chopper and sends it crashing to the ground and Selene and Michael end up in a final showdown with Marcus and William and after an intense fight and some close calls both William and Marcus are killed and Selene and Michael share a moment together and discover that Selene is now able to stay in the sunlight. And the film ends with Selene wondering what the future holds and believes a battle is coming. Okay, so that was Underworld Evolution. So what do I think of Underworld's sequel? Honestly, I think it's a really good sequel and I think it's better than the original. The film delivers a consistent fast-paced plot but offers not only good character development for the main characters but provides backstory without disrupting the main plot. The acting is top notch and there are some really enjoyable characters. I really like the music scores for the film, they really work to provide extra impact. The practical and CGI effects are all well done. All round, Underworld Evolution is a really good enjoyable film that I highly recommend you guys check out. Tune in tomorrow for another October Horror Fest. I'll talk to you guys later. This is the Entertainment Wizard, signing off.